approaching the entrance of the Panama Canal, you can see other ships waiting to enter. Our ship, the Celebrity Infinity, is paying $365,000 to go through and reserved a spot a year in advance, so we'll not have to wait once entering. Off in the distance, Panama City. What a sight of all these ships waiting. The idea of a canal that would connect the Atlantic and the Pacific was first conceived by the Spaniards when they arrived on the isthmus of Panama here in the early 16th century. Approaching the Bridge of the Americas. The connection between Central and South America. The Panama Canal, the second biggest construction effort ever behind only the great Egyptian pyramids. The Hoover Dam of the 1930s would be a distant third. It is important to understand to build this Panama Canal, over 26,000 people died. Panama in the late 1800s was called a death trap. Yellow fever, malaria, poisonous snakes, landslides, pneumonia, dynamite explosions were many of the reasons for the thousands of deaths. During the French effort in the late 1800s, one French engineer and his wife traveled over with caskets. They knew what they were getting into. A U.S. military exploration expedition into the jungles in the mid-1800s, led by a man named Strain, took almost 30 men in there. Terribly lost, they resorted to eating live toads and berries that took the enamel off their teeth and caused excruciating stomach pain. A quarter of the men died. When they finally were found, Strain, the leader, was down to 70 pounds. He would die a few years later in his early 30s. In the 1850s, a railroad funded by U.S. businessmen was finished along the proposed route, and that would be a significant step. Over 5,000 workers were paid 80 cents a day on that railroad. Many left for the California gold rush because conditions here were so horrific, so bad that many Chinese workers became distraught and sharpened bamboo poles and plunged onto them to end their misery. A Cologne hospital sold the skeletons of the workers to U.S. and Europe hospitals for research. I share these stories so that we may appreciate the sacrifice that went into this, that when it was finished in 1914, it was the moonshot of its era. When it was done, so much spoil was removed, dirt, rocks, and such, that you could build a China wall with it from San Francisco to New York. You could put it in a city block and it would go 16 miles high. You could have put it all on flat cars and they would have circled the world four times. Since its opening in 1914, more than one million ships from all over the world have transited this canal. A major reason the French effort in the 1880s went bankrupt was they insisted on a sea level canal when they should have done a system of locks. In fact, they were advised that, but ignored it. The waterway uses a system of locks with two lanes that operates as water elevators and raises the ships from sea level to the level of Gatun Lake, 26 meters above sea level, to allow the crossing through the Continental Divide and then lowers the ships to sea level on the other side of the isthmus. Without this canal, a ship would have to go an extra 8,000 miles around the tip of South America. We are going through the Miraflores lock, the first lock coming from the Pacific side. When we arrived, a local pilot came on to help guide us. Here are my feet. As you can see, we only have a couple of feet to spare. You 
you see as many as eight locos or mules connect to the ship. The ship is under its own power going very slow, but they're there to help. 2014, 100 years, over 10,000 workers work round the clock on the Panama Canal. Here, 26 million gallons of water are filling up our lock. The gates will not open until both sides are exactly even. The gates are opening. The hinges on them alone are 17 tons. As you can see, the ship next to us is ready to go through. We have to fill up to the same level. See, there are two gates, the second for security, in case something pressure-wise happened to the first. And all of this water coming from Gatun Lake up ahead, fueled by tropical rain. is opening, we will move forward. It is 48 miles across and takes 10 to 12 hours to travel. The top customers are the US, China, Japan, South Korea, and Chile. Going through the second set of locks, see this container ship? When expansion of the Panama Canal is finished, many of the large container ships will have to pay $800,000 to a million dollars a trip to Panama to go through the expanded Panama Canal, which will be a great trip in the future. Now we are raising up to 85 feet above sea level to the Gatun Lake level, the highest level we would be. Here you see the expansion. Edgerton's Travel will be doing group trips through the Panama Canal post-expansion. The new locks will be amazing. Let's go back in history now to 1880 when the French were the first to try to build the canal under the leadership of Ferdinand de Lesseps, the great Frenchman. He had been the driving force behind the successful Suez Canal, but he was more of a politician ambassador than he was an engineer. De Lesseps was 74 at the time and had married a younger woman later in life, fathering 12 children, which some felt was a greater feat than any canal anywhere. His mistake, not going with locks. There's no way they could have tamed the Chagres River which could rise as much as 24 feet in 24 hours. A major problem was mosquitoes and yellow fever and malaria. And in hospital rooms, they had had a problem with ants, so they put the bedpost in water, which provided a perfect feeding ground for the mosquitoes. Three out of every four that went in a hospital died. Of the first 24 nuns that arrived, 22 perished. They wanted to know, was de Lesseps a canal digger or a grave digger? The French ended up spending almost $300 million. Many investors lost their life savings and they ran out of money and they failed. But not totally. They were ahead of their time. They just weren't ready. They didn't have the right equipment then. And their maps and surveys and some of their equipment would be invaluable for the Americans ahead. In 1901, 12 years later, President William McKinley was assassinated and Theodore Roosevelt became president. As one person said, that damn cowboy is president of the U.S. Roosevelt firmly believed the key for U.S. power was a canal to help with the Navy, sea power. 
in 1903 after quote unquote helping Panama gain independence from Colombia, we gained the rights and started to build the canal again. The first year was a fiasco. Many more died because of yellow fever. There was no plan. A big key was when John Stevens, a blunt 52-year-old fine railroad engineer, took over and he stopped building. For about two years, he led the costliest health sanitation campaign in U.S. history. And that was critical because they cleaned this place up and they figured out it was insects. They sanitized everything. As we go through this expansion area, looking back, it was Stevens who convinced President Roosevelt to go with the lock system and dam the Chagres River. At that time, we had much better steam shovels. 24,000 men were at work. Roosevelt visited. It was the first time a U.S. president had left the country while sitting in office. As we travel, it's not just big ships, but sometimes sailboats that pay as much as $800 to 3200 to go through. The U.S. used more explosives in this canal than all the previous wars. The sun would often soften the dynamite. One unexpected explosion killed 23 men. This prison we are passing is where the ex-dictator of Panama, Noriega, is spending his final years in prison. As construction neared completion, one of the visitors was a 10-year-old Charles Lindbergh with his family. No doubt his visit here helped pave the way for the Spirit of St. Louis trip. On August 15, 1914, the SS Incone became the first ship to go through. The building of the canal was a success. The U.S. gave Panama control in 1999. If you would ever like to read an excellent book on the building of the Panama Canal, I suggest David McCullough's The Path Between the Seas, The Creation of the Canal, 1870 to 1914. headed towards the Caribbean side. Look at the color of the water now. We entered here near Panama City through the Miraflores locks, the second locks the Calabria cut, and now we are in this wide body of water, the Gatun Lake. See how wide it is out there? Coming up on the final locks, the Gatun Locks, and then it will be Cologne and the Caribbean. The water used to raise and lower the vessels in each of the set of locks is obtained from here at Gatun Lake by gravity and poured into the locks through a main culvert system that extends under the lock chambers from the side walls and the center wall. Approaching the Gatun locks and then the Caribbean. Many watch from inside. <laughs> well, some are down front. After this lock, we will have gone through the Panama Canal. Almost 100 years ago was the first passage. And this is how people can view it from their room. And then from your room, you can look right out and look at there. Hey there. Hi. Look how close we are. 
my goodness, inches away from the room. Through the Panama Canal from the cabin view. It is the next day, and while our ship is spending some time in Cologne, Panama, I have taken this excursion to the Gatun Locks to give you different views. Look at the massive size there. You see the gates opening there? Again, eight to 10 hours for this to go through the Panama Canal. Had it gone around South America, two to three weeks.